What up, gangsters? Uh, welcome to episode 151 of Super Mega Cast. Actually, you know what? That means yeah, what? we're now at the episode where every single episode up to this point could have the, the, the different name of an original Pokemon. And You're this right. would be the last one. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Going through them all, yeah. I, uh, I used to have that Pokemon poster on my door as when I was a kid that had all like 151 of them. And uh, I remember, I think Burger King was the thing that had them. They had like the gold plated cards. Yeah. When the oh movie my God. Came yeah. Out. I remember that. And uh, all the toys and shit. God, I was a big Pokemon fan. I, I, uh, I've said this before, but I got out of, I got out of Pokemon around Emerald, which is, is that third generation? Is that only third generation? I think that's third generation. I think so. I think because, so. Because, yeah, because that's Trico and Torchic. And then the second generation was Totodile and uh, what's that leaf person's name? To, uh, uh, I know what you're talking Chikorita? about. Chikorita? Ch Chika 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 Peak? Chika Chikorita? Something Ch like that, right? Chikorita, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. But yeah, after that, like I couldn't get into... Dude, the new Pokemon Sword and Shield. I'm sorry. Have you seen gameplay? It looks bad. It looks like ass. Like... I hope that that's just early footage. I'm gonna be honest. Like <laughs> it looks, it looks like. Did bad. you see it? Like the trees and the way the Pokemon are flying. I'm like, for the Switch one, it seems like it was supposed to come out for the DS, and then at some point during development, they were like, "We want this out for the Switch," and they're like, "Oh, okay." Because if you look at that, it's 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 not anything like new. Like, it's all I mean, the same it's old. It's new, but like stuff. the whole thing where the Pokemon gets big, that's stupid to me. I don't know. I, again, I haven't been interested in since Gen three. Did you? Did, you you saw gameplay, right? I saw where like the like the monster like appears and like it, it just didn't. Like the trees look like PS one era. Yeah, it's like what the hell? It's the Switch, which is a or, super powerful console. Look at Breath of the Wild. I feel like they're able to do that. And also, isn't there something about like I saw something something controversy with the new Pokemon game with the amount of Pokemon in it? They are not including all of the generations. Like, Why? you cannot have all the generations. You can only have, like, a pa I think, specific Pokemon from certain generations. That's so weird. Why not just put them all in? Because, like, that, that just seems like they're downgrading stuff. I was talking to Justin, and he's like, uh, he was like, he named a Pokemon, I can't remember what it was, but he's like, imagine if this was someone's favorite Pokemon. And it was a Pokemon that's not, like, a main, it's not a starter. But like you know how like people have their favorite Pokemon and sometimes it's kind of like one of the side. I cast. love Nosepass. Nosepass is one of my all time favorites. Yeah, imagine and if they didn't put Nosepass. So it's like in. imagine that it's like some people like imagine some people's favorite Pokemon they wouldn't be able to and they want to play the game because like oh I can't wait to play the new Pokemon so I can get that one in the new game. If there was any, if there was, if they were going to put out a Pokemon for the Switch. I think it would have had to been like all generations included. These graphics because this are is nice supposed to be the biggest one, right? Well, let's go. Switch. Let's go. Pikachu and Eevee looks way better than the yeah. The, the graphics are really Sword really good in that, and what that's and that's just a a remake essentially of Yellow. Yeah, that's actually insane to think about because I really did enjoy. Like I thought the graphics were good in that. Like honestly, I would. If they had literally just used the same graphics from that, I don't think people would be as upset. It yeah. just seems like it's uh, maybe they are, but it just looks. It just worse. Did, I, the videos didn't look good. Maybe it's just early footage, and I heard people defending it, saying that it is just early footage. But I, I don't know. It, it it didn't put a good taste in my mouth. But maybe when it comes out, it'll be like really good, and they'll fix a bunch of the things. Isn't it coming out soon? I mean, you saw with the new Sonic movie how they're gonna they pushed it off, and they're gonna they're gonna fix Sonic's design. How are they gonna do that through the whole movie though? How are they gonna fix? <laughs> How are they going to fix Sonic's design through the whole thing? Like, what are they going to make him look like? The original Sonic? There's what if like, they purposely made him bad as a marketing thing? Just so it would blow up and everyone would, like, freak out about it. And then when they make the new version, everyone already... It's already on their minds. I'm so stuck with this. Because then you, you'll see uh, pictures like this. Where it's like, it doesn't make... It makes the game look better than what I saw gameplay-wise. Oh, that looks... But it's like, does that, that looks good. Does that exist? And why wasn't that shown? Like, I... I'm just very skeptical of 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 the game. Well, this screenshot I'm looking at right now looks really good. Which one? That the one you had pulled up. Ah, but also in like aren't like the animations like the fighting animations? Well, like, yeah, and the Pokemon in the wild are just what they're just going in circles and yeah. very stagnant. No, th th I remember it was like seagulls, and it just looked like they were just like floating oddly. I'm gonna see if I can find that footage real quick. I'm not even sure it's important. Sorry to open this one up ranting about the new Pokemon, guys. I, I know it, we're going to get probably... a lot of dislikes because people do love their Pokemon. I love Pokemon, that... too. I just I just want it to be the best it can be. Maybe it's uh, 
Maybe it'll be good though. I like it. It probably will be good. Ultimately, we're probably just just bitching in the kitchen a little too early before the uh, cake is done. But you know, dude. He's speaking Chinese. Hold on, I gotta get to a specific part. I can find it. I can find it. Like, look at the environments and look at the way the Pokemon are moving. Yeah, that. Oops, I uh, I clicked the Siri button. That's fine. Siri, stop. Siri, she won't listen. Okay. I just don't understand. It doesn't look very good. At least it doesn't look very good for what it could be on the Switch, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, again, I wasn't interested in the first place. So, like, it's not like a... It's just one of those things where, like, I'm all, when some Pokemon comes out, I'm always waiting to be like, will this get me back into like, it? this is the one. Yeah, this is, this is what's going to get me back into it. I really um, didn't like X and Y. Uh, I didn't play it. I didn't really like Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. You didn't like, uh, you didn't like those? I didn't play them that much. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan though. I don't. I don't think I got Omega. I think I just got regular Ruby and Sapphire. Well, Emerald, well, no, those Emerald were, is still. Those mine. were good. I'm talking about the remakes. Oh, they did oh. Omega Ruby and is Alpha. Is it just like a 3D remake? Yeah, for 3DS. Um, Mega. It wasn't. I. I wasn't the biggest fan. I don't know something about it. I wasn't like the biggest fan of. I just. I just miss honestly. Oh. Oh man. I think my favorite. Pokemon. I love the 2D art way more than the 3D I know, art. The, I know. Like okay. That's what I miss. Honestly, if they just took, if they went pixel art and they made a new Pokemon game that was like massive, but it was the old pixel art style, people would go crazy for it. You Isn't know? the top image a lot more pleasing than the bottom image of, in terms of like Absolutely. comparing Ruby and then Omega Ruby? It looks, yeah. So we're, we're showing each other pictures of like the Pokemon. We should get off this because I feel like we're just we're just uh, harping and, and complaining now. I think Diamond and Pearl were my favorite. I think okay. that that was like the best in the whole series. Um, but those were also like, some of the first ones I played, I played uh, Silver on Game Boy Color and I didn't play another one until... Uh, Diamond and Pearl came out, and then I I got uh, Pearl, and I played the shit out of it, and I loved I loved Diamond and Pearl. I just remember playing Yellow first, and then Red and Blue. I just had the own all the all the different colors, and there were shops that you could go get games for cheaper because they were used. I think it, it wasn't GameStop; it was like one of those little little dinky game stores. Yeah, and I remember uh, hearing someone go, "Yeah, there's Pokemon Green," and I was like. What? what? And I like for the longest time as a kid because I didn't have the like I didn't the internet wasn't as useful as it is today so like I thought it was just like it was a rumor for the longest time and then I then I saw a cartridge of Pokemon Green and I was like what, what? leaf green right was yeah. that one Yeah with, man I remember uh, with Venusaur on the Yeah cover? yeah more like Penisaur You know what else you speaking in this episode 151 you know what else has 151 Malcolm in the middle that shows 151 episodes and I know that because I was such a big fan of that show growing up, and I binge watched it so much. And then when they added it to Netflix, I sat down, I watched all 151 episodes in a very short period of time, and I finished the finale, and I restarted like the same day, and I started watching it all over. It's again. a good show. It's fucking incredible, man. Malcolm in the Middle is, I think, one of like the best shows ever made in terms of like comedic timing, writing, and then overall just that whole feel good thing because it, it it had that whole like a uh, feel good aspect to it because there'd be mm. a lot of serious moments where you'd like see the family bond and grow even though those, they're so dysfunctional it was one of those things where the, the, well okay i re i really liked the um in malcolm in the middle that the home they lived in and the house the 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 the, the dress setting of the house or the dressing of the house um was really? very accurate yeah to, like how you feel a family who earned that income would be living. That's the thing. In terms of like, like when you watch like other TV shows, you see, you know, the characters are always supposed to be poor, but they're living in amazing studio apartments yeah. in New York and shit like exactly. that. Exactly. Because like you see a lot of like modern sitcoms and stuff and like, of course the sets are like super well done. And mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, if that was in LA, that how like, Oh, this takes place in LA. That would be like eight grand a month. And yeah. it's like, there's no way they could afford that. But Malcolm in the middle, it was like really relatable. Especially because, like, uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in a really small one-story brick house that kind of felt like that. Mm -hmm. And all of my friends did, too. So I think that's another reason I really liked that show was because it, it felt very relatable and it felt very, uh, like, real, you know? Because it's like you get to see them in this kind of, like, small one-story house. And it's uh, it's very, I guess, charming. It's lived in. Yeah. It, like, too. it really looked like a real—it looked like they set up the cameras in an actual house that a family lived in and not a set. 
Yeah. Even though it was a set. I think that they just did was, a really was good it a, Was it a studio set? It, was. Uh, it was. The whole house was a studio set. Yeah, and I didn't know that until I was Because in Breaking a, Bad, they just used an actual house. I was watching a <laughs> behind the scenes thing, uh, and I saw like where they panned the camera up and like the ceiling didn't exist. And I was like, oh my God, that just blew my whole mind. There's the whole joke in Fresh Prince where he's like, He's like something about y'all rich but can't afford it like can't afford a ceiling and then it pans up to like the scaffolding and stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's really funny. I, I didn't get the 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 bit 100% correct, but that's the 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 essence of it at least. Ma- Malcolm Middle just had so many hilarious cold opens too. I remember this one where like Dewey's like playing with dolls in his room and how walks by and he's like he like stops cuz he's Dewey playing with dolls. He's like, "What what you doing, son?" He's like, "Just playing with dolls." And how's like, <laughs> uh, what do you say we go out and get you that new action figure you want? He's like, <laughs> okay. I mean, like, it's just like he was doing that just so he can get the action figure. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's so clever. Um, uh, I didn't, a lot of, when I talked to people about it, a lot of people didn't like when Francis was in, where, where was he? Okay. He, there's, so. No, when he was in the It starts in the military place. school. I'm talking about that one. When he goes to Alaska. Alaska, yes. Yeah. A yeah. lot of, some people didn't like that. Was it after Alaska he goes to the ranch, or was that still yeah. the same? He leaves shit? military school to go to Alaska to go logging, and then after that he leaves Alaska and he ends up on that like dude ranch, which I liked all those arcs honestly. Yeah, I thought they were all, and I liked about the show was they had different overarching, uh, like story arcs for each character, which I thought was really cool. Um, like the whole thing about like there's that season where like Stevie's mom, like goes wild and like leaves the family. Yep, I mean, like, I think she comes back later. It's like I really liked all that shit. I, I think uh, the two episodes that come to mind now that like because uh, they just stuck out, and I want to revisit the whole show at some point. But particularly these two episodes stand out. I liked the B episode where Hal is running from the B because thematically it was just fun. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember um, that one. And then uh, I think one of my favorite episodes is the uh, different timelines one. Oh, they're the bowling. bowling. Yeah. It's yeah. such a good episode. Oh, that one's like classic. That yeah. one's so well done. And um there's another one that's kind of stylized like that where it it's like Malcolm and Reese are trying they're getting even with each other mm-hmm. and it's like it starts at the end and goes backwards and it's like really escalated and then like at the end of the episode it shows the beginning and it's literally just cuz like he like took the last waffle or something it's like it's it's such a good uh just overall good show i actually was it the finale they were covered in poo poo yes it was okay the finale episode I, if we went to a malcolm little trivia night i think i could i i could i could get us to the gold and how, how about this the show ends well too it does i like, like it, it I like it's the not ending. like a happily ever after you know it's very just kind of like this is just what happens at the end and this is the conclusion of our characters and their arcs and stuff i know i mean it, it felt good still and it was like it was still very real. It's a happy ending. It, it is a happy ending. But it's not what you would expect out of a happy ending in terms of television. I think Reese goes and like lives with Craig and he's like a janitor. <laughs> yeah. I think Malcolm's a janitor. Yeah, Malcolm's a janitor. Yeah, it's... Because it, uh, he's he's kind of a... He's taking class at Harvard, but he's also a janitor. It's the whole parallel of uh, Goodwill Hunting, I think. It's so good. Actually, when I first moved to LA, because um, that show was so special to me when I was younger, I was like, wait a second, that house is in LA. So I took a little pilgrimage yeah, to but... the street where they shot Malcolm Middle. And I remember driving down or the it. exteriors, right? Yeah, the exteriors. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, my God, this is the street from Malcolm the Middle. And I drove up to the house. They tore it down and built a new, like, I remember modern house that. where it's like it's very modern and, like, rich looking with, like, it's like a white. It's like a very cube, cubist house. Yeah, I don't know. Modern. It, it was very it was a bummer because I was like, oh, man, like, this is the front yard. Like, this is it. This is where all that stuff happened. This is the street. Uh, and then there's this, they tore down the house, which was super sad, but it's in studio city. So you'll have equally as hard of a, uh, as hard of, I don't know how to say that. What I'm trying to say equally as hard of a time, equally as hard of a time. Yes. That makes sense. It sounds weird, but it makes sense. It does. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, with the breaking bad house, because they, they have, they have that on lock. They have the owners sit out there in lawn chairs and kind of like secure their their land. I've been. <laughs> I, I went. You to the tried, house. and they were they were uh, weren't they out? No. So when I was in Albuquerque last year, uh, I was waiting for. Uh, uh, it was like the beginning. I was meeting Jackson Harrison on a road trip, and they were doing cross country. But I was going to meet up with them in Albuquerque and drive back to L.A. And I had like six hours to kill in Albuquerque before I uh, met up with them. So I was like. 
fuck, I'm going to go see some Breaking Bad places because I also love that show so much. I don't mm-hmm. know what else to do in Albuquerque. So I went to Los Pueblos Hermanos. I went to the restaurant and I had food there. And it was Because they still hold like that the fast food takes that that chain takes pride in being the location of the Yeah, they had like posters right? on the wall. They were playing Breaking Bad on the TV when I went in. And I had this like uh New Mexican chicken sandwich which had these like green chilies on it Ooh. and grilled chicken and it was really New Mexican food is fucking awesome. And Mexican food? New Mexican food. Not old Not Mexican. old Mexican food. Yuck. New Mexican <laughs> food is really good though. And uh then I went to the Breaking Bad house where they shot Breaking Bad and I mean I get why the people who live there would get annoyed, but also at the same time, I don't, it's like you bought the Breaking, the Breaking Bad house. Like one of, the, expect? one of the greatest shows like on one of American the most famous television shows. ever. Like, but it's like, I, I went there and they had- You feel for them. I, I do to a degree, but it's like, I'm pretty sure they bought the house after the show. So it's oh, like, of course. you know what well, you're they getting had into. Yeah, you know what you're getting into. And I remember they had gates out front, ton of security cameras. They had a bunch of signs that were like... They have traffic cones and shit? Yeah, they had traffic cones so you couldn't park in front of there. And mm-hmm. they had signs that were like, do not come up to the house. Do not like take pictures from across the street if you're going to take a picture. And I got there and I was looking at it. I was like, holy shit, this is like Walter White Street and house. And it was really cool. And while I was there, I saw like six families come by, get out, take pictures in front of it. So like it was bumping. It was, it was clearly like that's a popular neighborhood for people to visit in Albuquerque. But it's one of the most, one of the most famous TV houses, like, ever. Yeah. So, if you buy that house, like, you can't be that mad, because it's not like you didn't know what you were getting into. Maybe it comes at a good price because of that stuff. Or maybe, oh, yeah, I mean. Do you think it makes it more expensive because it was Breaking Bad, or do you yeah. think it makes it less expensive because it's a hassle? I think the value of that house is so high because it's so famous now, you know? And, um, I, what was it? Uh... Apparently, like, I remember reading about, like, the couple that owned it during filming. There was, like, an old couple, and they'd come out and give people, like, cookies and stuff. And if you knocked on the door, they'd be nice. Huh. That might have just been Reddit rumors, but... Didn't people also, like... Throw pizza on the roof. That's, yeah, what... that's why they had to put the gates up. Yeah. It's all gated up. Um, It was cool seeing it, though. It's very surreal, you know, being really attached to something like a TV show like Malcolm in the Middle or Breaking Bad. And then going and suddenly existing in the same physical, like, earthly location as this thing that you've experienced so many hours of and memories of, yeah. like emotions, and suddenly being there at the house of Malcolm Middle, Breaking the Bad. It's it's Breaking in the Bad. <laughs> Dude, Breaking in the Bad and Malcolm Middle? It was uh, <laughs> it was cool. It was really cool. I didn't get up close to the house because I didn't want to uh, annoy the people. You're a big but baby. I think I put a picture on my Instagram story in front of it. I don't remember. But it was uh, it was cool. I felt like a, like a real cheesy Hollywood tourist, but I was like, I had to. Who cares? I had to. If I'm in Albuquerque, it's like... I don't know. Next time I'm gonna come back to Albuquerque, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna check it out. So there's a website that has like all the locations from Breaking Bad shooting you can visit. And yeah. then we have Better Call Saul, Which still going on, coming back in 2020. They gotta. Did they? Wait, didn't they announce that it's a set number of seasons? No. I thought something came out where it's like six. I don't. Maybe. Shit, I'm maybe, up maybe I'm making news. BS up. Hold You're on. making BS up over here. That's a fantastic show, by the way. If you like Breaking Bad, go watch Better Call Saul. It's it's a slow burner, but it's good. Um, and the fifth season was supposed to come out this year, uh, but they pushed it to 2020 because of uh, talent needs. Yeah, Better Call Saul to end with season six. Star says so really from the Hollywood Reporter. So, so yeah, only two more know. seasons. How are they gonna fit all that in? It's been burning so slow. Well, I mean, it only has to tell the story up until the beginning of uh, Breaking Bad. Oh, right? that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they said they were gonna tell the story of after, but they're like, but they're but, but they're but they're doing that um, at the beginning of each season. Yeah, that's that's true. not a spoiler, but that's just how it's structured. Well, it's a really good show. Ryan and I would have like a we have a tradition where like every night when it would air on when it TV, comes back on, we're doing that. Oh, again. of course, we'll order Buffalo Wild Wings or like Halal. <sighs> And we'll just like chill and just like drink and stuff and just watch it. Uh, we'll, we'll each like take turns hosting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's be nice. It's fun. I remember uh, we started doing that when we lived in the old Super Mega apartment. Was it with Better Call Saul that we started that with? Yeah. Okay. I come like into your room. Show. It was, it was another, another show. Was it Nathan for you? It was something that we like would premiere or like watch together. I oh, feel fuck. like it was. Was it? I, I feel like it was Better I feel Call like Saul. Another show. Just think of Better Call Saul season one come, came out. That's like, true. What, like I think, four I th- years I ago? I think it was Better Call Saul. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was. And I'd go in Ryan's room, we'd get the beat ups, we'd sit on his little couch, we'd watch the TV. That was fun. <laughs> you know, I did have a little couch. I still have that little couch. It's Lego's little couch now, though. Yeah, Lego loves that little couch. <laughs> I mean, it's a perfect size for a dog. You it's, look at that couch, it's like, oh, that's a cute little couch. It's like couch. a tiny little couch. It's like a little black leather couch. <laughs> it looks like the casting couch for porn, but if it was for like very small people. I don't mean it like that. I, uh, I'm i just being like like a miniature size. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> was help like, me, Ryan. Help me. I was like, I see where this is headed. That's not what I was, that's not where I was trying to take <laughs> no it. No dive. I was right like, fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, God. You're really giving me away quite early, aren't you? Yeah, sorry, bro. It's fine. It's, it's fine. good, though. It's, uh... It's what? It's, it's, it's okay. okay. That's it. It's, it's just there's a, there's a bit of odd silence. I didn't it's know good. It's good. It's, uh... You know, it's, I was it's, waiting for you to say something. Uh, yeah. There. Um, how you been though, man? You been doing good? What you been up to lately? Um, nothing much. Watching movies, kissing boys, playing games with people's hearts. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, um, playing games, breaking hearts. <laughs> I uh, I have been just doing what Ryan does, which is watch movies, play video games. And, uh, masturbate. Yeah. <laughs> so I was making the motion. I was like, you doing a little yep. bit of that? A little I, bit of this. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. It started with a jizz. Now we're up to bat. See, I mixed up the started lyrics. Started with a jizz. Started with some jizz. Now, uh, kick back, relax. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Little. Dude, my favorite mornings are the ones where I wake up super late, jerk off, and then go back to bed for five hours. Yeah? Yeah. It's a horrible, horrible way to spend the day. Just... You, you, you got to keep in mind whenever whenever you... When you whenever, crank one out, you whenever, get tired. Well, whenever you masturbate, yeah, you get tired and that an angel weeps. Every time you masturbate, an angel cries. Yeah. An angel weeps. The tears will stream down. That's, that's why it rains all over the world. Every time it rains, it's because somebody masturbated and an angel is upset. I used to... When someone told me, it's like, it's raining because angels are crying. And in my head, I was like... <gasps> Whoa, that's amazing. I remember I thought thunder was God, was God and the angels bowling. laughing or bowling was, was bowling. another one. Was like there was God bowling was like laughing, hitting a strike. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that was definitely a fucking strike. Good job, there. God. We should go bowling soon, man. I'm down. We should do a whole video about the guys go bowling. Did you go to round one? I'd love to go to round one. I like for round video. one. Round one's fun. Actually, the manager at uh, at the round one we go to, he's a, he's a fan. I know. Well, I don't know if it's the same one. Was he? He said he saw you in there. I remember I was right. I was doing that horse game because they have this goofy ass horse game. And but you it's walk good. In. It's fun. Wait, it looks like the shittiest. We made Justin play it. I know, but it looks like the <laughs> shittiest game. It's like a big plastic horse you sit on and it gallops and you have to. It's like a horse racing game. Yeah. But you have to take the reins. I was like, I'll try this as a joke, and I played it, and it was so much fun. It's a racing game, but instead of a steering wheel, you're giving horse reins, and you have to like, you have to like, you know, like jump on the horse and it gallops and everything. <laughs> yeah. You have to whip the horse and hear it scream. Really fun, but like the manager came up while I was playing because it, it like broke while I was playing or it just wasn't working. And he there's was like, a lot of cool arcade plays. I mean, there's there's round one and then there's we should go to a classic 82. bowling alley. Eighty two is a cool bar in downtown LA where it's like arcades and pinball. I went there and it was like super packed. Oh, that place is always fucking packed. I went a couple weeks ago and it was like absolutely it was cool. They have I a lot of, they have a lot of fun games. They do. They have a uh, they have they have some of my favorite old like Simpsons arcade games. Then I love another place called like Family something. Like Button Mash. If you're in LA, check these places out. They're real cool. A lot of barcades. Uh, round one is is my favorite though because it's just there's so much to do there. Yeah. I remember last time I was at round one, I was loading up my game card and the guy checking me out was like, "Oh, by the way, um, you're being checked out, dude." Yeah, he was checking me out. He goes, Shit, "So man. so fucking sexy." He like right when I finished my transaction, he's like, "By the way, thanks for playing Battle for Bikini Bottom," and it's like walked off. And I was like. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. <laughs> it was funny. Um, but, dude, we should go bowling. We should do a video. Go to, like, a classic bowling alley. Like, a real nice fucking bowling alley. Like, a real L.A. one. Like, a real classic with the with the bad CG on the TV screens See, when you get, like, a split. I don't know if it's still there, but the one I used to go to all the time in Irmo was called Anchor Lanes. Ooh, I went to Twin Lanes. I'm sure they're all the same, right? They're all probably owned by one big and there's mega one in corporation. West Columbia, I can't remember the name of, but Anchor Lanes is the one I went to the most. It's uh, I think it's off of uh Lake Murray Boulevard. Yeah, you're going down Lake Murray Boulevard if you're coming from the if you're coming from the dam area, <clears throat> it would be on your right. See, I know this shit. You do know this shit pretty well, and now the the you viewers know. Down. The viewers know exactly how to get there too. <clears throat> yeah, you keep going you down Lake Murray Boulevard. Down Lake Murray Boulevard, away from the dam. Gotta, it's going to be on your right. 
It's a big parking lot. I don't think there's, if it's still there, if you keep on going down Lake Murray Boulevard, you're going to happen across what used to be a Piggly Wiggly. Ooh, but they also, shut those bad boys down. Mm-hmm. But also in that shopping center is a Groucho's. Oh, I see. I see where you're connecting the pieces. Yeah. Ryan does love his Groucho. I'm going home soon. I Ooh. get to have some Groucho's. Every I get day. to have some Moe's Waffle House. Waffle House. Fuck! I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to... I'm thinking of flying in um, to a to, waffle to house, to Charleston, so I can start in. off my trip with some Mama Kims. That's not a bad idea. It's man. not a bad idea at all. I, I love I miss like, Mama. How Mama big? Kim. If there was a compilation of us talking about South Carolina on this podcast, <clears throat> it would always it, be they reference Mama Kims or Groucho's or, or Irmo or it. It has to be like it'd be like a nine-hour compilation at this point. Yeah, it, it has to be right. But it's fine. It's where we grew up. I, know, I don't it's care. It's where, it's where those. What are we gonna Christian do? Not talk about our lives? Nope. Fuck y'all. We're going to talk about video games we're gonna talk about and Illinois. video games only. I, I like how on Spotify, we're like, Meh. last time I checked, we were the number four biggest gaming podcast. And I'm like, gaming podcast? We talk about games every now and then. We talk about movies more than games, probably. Yeah. People get upset when we talk about movies sometimes. Well, it's because things like movies and games are very opinionated because everyone feels differently about them. So if we voice our opinion one way about it and they feel differently, some people, yeah. instead of being like, oh, we just feel differently about it, we'll go to the go to the comments. I, well, I think it's a, the problem is that um, I uh, – because I've been reading the comments, and I know I'm not supposed to, Matt, and I know how bad that is for my mental health, but I couldn't help it um, – Whereas like people are like, Ryan never likes anything. It's so boring. He never likes anything that's coming out. It's like, do you think I'm gonna think Spider Man Far From Home is an Oscar worthy like like film? It was fun. I said it's fun and it's okay. Like, um, there's like I don't know, there's a lot of movies. I feel like I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, Matt, but I think most of the sorry. <laughs> I think most of the movies that come out are just average at that. And it takes a little bit of something special for a movie to be good or great. You know, yeah. Like when you go out to a theater, how many times are you like, "That was a fuck, that was amazing." Like not often, right? I, I just remember when I saw Twenty Twelve. I was walking out of the theater. And like, <laughs> no, the two dudes were like, "Fucking best movie of the century, <laughs> man!" Like clapping his hands. Uh, it's well, like I'm sorry, I don't think Godzilla and and Spider Man are are uh, the best movies in the world. But the thing is, also, Some, uh, so, I don't think they're for me. Well, everyone. Spider Man was fun. I said Spider Man was fun. You have your own personal tastes because. You've lived. I a like life. Midsummer a lot. You've you've lived a life full of experiences, and through those experiences, you've garnered a specific taste. And now, you know, you have a podcast, so you're free to express your opinions on those things. At the end of the day, they're your opinions, and if people get mad about it, then they're just big fucking babies. Because movie, yeah. movie taste is not like fact. It's you know, Ryan and I disagree on a bunch of movies, and we agree on a bunch of movies. Yeah, you think some movies are good that I think are that like, I don't think are good, such as. Uh, Angry Birds. Angry Birds is one. I really liked the Angry Birds. See, movie. I watched it and I got down to your. You got down on your one knee and said, "Matt, will you marry me?" Because this is the best movie I've ever. I got down seen. to your level of intelligence and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, I could see how this would be." I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, a real, real, a real jackass. <laughs> but uh, like I could. It's like I watched it and I was like, "That's a. It's. It's an animated movie. It's. It. It wasn't offensively bad. Like it wasn't horrible. Like I could sit through it and I could follow it." But the way you were talking about it, you you were you were saying it was like one of the best animated f films you've seen like in the year or something. In that year, yeah, that year. I hadn't seen a lot. And also the thing about it is, I think, I think that expectations were set beforehand. Where I'm like, this is the Angry Birds movie; it's gonna suck. And then being pleasantly surprised to find out it was fantastic. What a what, fantastic! Yeah, it, you know, I was like, I love this. It's great. You can, you can like whatever you want, buddy. Um, just know that you are inferior to my intellect if, uh, you do not like, uh, artsy films. I know. I know. You watch, you, I mean, you watch a lot more, uh, artsy stuff than I do. Yeah, I guess, oh yeah, I mean, that's mainly because Harrison always puts movies on. Yeah. Like, last night he put on Bad Lieutenant, which I'd never seen, which was a fucking phenomenal movie, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's from the 90s. It's Nicolas uh, Cage. No, not the Nicolas Cage <laughs> one. It was so good, though. It's like a, just like a rogue cop movie. Yeah. And, and it's like, he's a crazy drug addict, smokes a lot of crack. It's just like, it's one of those, every scene is like a slice of life scene. And I love those movies. Yeah. Where it's just kind of like, just more just showing what his life is like in every scene instead of like doing something. There are plot advancing scenes, but a lot of scenes just be him doing drugs and stuff like this. And, and this is going to go the opposite direction, but in terms of like, this is just 
life. This is there's not really a a, a scene. There is a plot, but it's not the most like it's not the it's not what's driving the movie. The character is what's driving the movie in terms exactly. of you following them, which I think is something that I know it's a diff, way different type of movie, but I think it's something that. Um, Miyazaki does really well yeah. in his Ghibli films is uh he does he does make movies he makes a lot of movies and there are plots um but some of his movies like uh like Ponyo for instance or um My Neighbor Totoro he um it's it's very much just like a, this is what I'm just going to have these are just people living and I'm going to have these cute little instances happen and they're going to be entertaining and you're going to like these characters and watch what they do like it's it's like I like movies where you're just observing characters sometimes and I think uh, Miyazaki does that well that's why I like All um, is Lost All is Lost yes because it's like well. I love those movies where the scenes are like more slice of life like you're kind of just uh observing you're a flat you're you're a fly in the ocean. Yeah, you're, you're just a fly in the middle of the Indian Ocean. <laughs> uh, what what are some what are some movies we disagree on? Is there any like I feel like you would know them better than me. I'm trying to think. There's definitely been a few. We agree. We agree. We a talked lot about of the this times. when we when we had dinner recently. Yeah. But we agree most of the time when most we see time, something. Yeah. Oh, uh Well, sometimes like There's I'll, a recent one. There's uh, a recent one. That we disagreed on? Yeah. That I really liked and you didn't like. Oh no. That hmm. you thought was really bad and I thought was pretty good. Or I didn't think it was pretty good, but I liked it. What was it? It was a recent movie. Did we see it in theaters? Yeah. Not together. Not together. We didn't see it together, but we Did both it, ended up seeing it. Do you remember it. when it came out? Uh what was it? It was it was I thought it was it was just fun. It was very it was a good movie. Yeah, but I need to know what Fuck, it was. Fuck, it was recently in theaters. You saw it, did not like it. I saw it and I really enjoyed it. Um Hold on. Stuber? I'm kidding. <laughs> Stuber? <laughs> um, McGruber. Matt. Oh, I'm so... Oh, three movies I'm excited for are coming out this weekend. Oh, your mama's pussy. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll list them soon. Your mama's ball sack. I'm so important and my, my opinions list them, dude. are so great. List those fucking movies. Was it Child's Play? Was not Child's Play. Did, uh, okay. It was before that. John Wick 3, we both Dude, loved. John Wick 3... Fucking phenomenal movie, and I also had a dream I met Keanu Reeves. Was it Detective night. Pikachu? It was Detective Pikachu. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, because I didn't like it that much. I like Detective Pikachu, and you th and you thought, and like that's fine. Like I don't, like I'm not gonna attack you because you thought Detective Pikachu was fun, but you sure as hell will attack me for thinking it was just okay, and yeah, I didn't like. I it. I will. In fact, I'll come uh, to your your place of living, and I will might commit some arson, some acts of some acts of un unthinkable crimes against you. Three movies that are coming out this weekend that I. Maybe I should start doing this every now and then, like <laughs> movies that are on my radar that I'm like, hey, maybe people should keep these on their radar if they're interested. Um, uh, one is The Farewell. Uh, it's the movie that starts. Uh, does she have a, a proper actress name yet or is it still Aquafina? I think it's just Aquafina right now. Yeah, it's the one about the the Chinese family and the 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 grandmother is dying of cancer and they don't want to tell her <laughs> something oh yeah it's a it's it's a it's, Sorry, a, I thought it's it was hilarious a what's the other ones um the other one is the art of self-defense yes i want to see that so bad looks, that looks really, really good with I'm, jesse eisenberg yes and then the other one okay i don't care if i get shit for my movie taste on this thing but i have i really enjoy creature features at first i was like i like monster movies but it's like i i think i specifically like creature features more um not creatures as in like creature of the black lagoon while that is a fun little romp um i i really like sharks or alligators or bears or stuff like that scary monsters nice yeah. sprites <laughs> um there's a movie coming out called crawl that I'm really, uh, I'm pumped to go the see because I hope it's one. fun. Yeah, it, it looks like fun. The one where uh, a hurricane uh, goes through Florida and this this girl stays behind because her dad was staying behind her. I can't remember. She has to go save her dad. But the her house gets ends, ends up being flooded and filled with alligators. So she has to traverse her house filled with alligators and like trap them in the shower and shit. Like it's like Home Alone, but with alligators. <laughs> yeah, and I I love goofy shit like that. And so you know, a lot of the times I go to those types of movies and I, I don't find you know they're not fun and they're not good. And I'm like, oh that that was bad. And it's like, what did you expect? But sometimes they're that right bit of a uh, camp 
that's just fun. Yeah. And uh, like uh, I thought the the Meg was really fun and goofy to watch. Like you, you, we all saw that together. Yeah. It was a with a movie with, with a was it Jason it, Statham was being dragged by a boat as an the, incredibly as Chinese funded movie. <laughs> oh yeah, do wait. What about instead of Home Alone, it's Dome Alone. It's just, <laughs> Dude, it's just Macaulay Culkin sucking his own dick at home. Dude, I can uh, look up sort by movies NC seventeen. Yo, we got any good NC seventeen joints coming out? No, well, I can look up coming nothing coming. Do they really soon. even make those anymore? No, I, they know. It won't I think make money. they they might. But I think most NC-17 is just given to R because... I think they try to cut it down. Like, they cut shit out to make it R because they know it'll have a bigger audience. Well, R is becoming, that. I think, a little more lenient. Like, I like in R-rated films these days, I've seen a lot more dick than I did in previous R-rated films. I've noticed that, yeah. When I realized, oh, I'm actually just watching a gay porno. <laughs> Dude, we should run on a movie. Like Midsummer had some had some uh, had had some penis. Penis? In it. it had yeah. had multiple peni in it. It's funny how like male frontal nudity is like the worst thing you can show in a movie. Pretty much. Like why why is that regarded as like so much worse than like? Because I think I think a penis is a lot more jarring to be exposed to than like a vagina. Than or a vaginal breasts. crease. Yeah. Why is that though? Because penises are aggressive. Because it's like in nature. Out. I it's guess. Like, it's like it's like it's projecting outwards towards. Yeah, you. but most of the, I don't I don't think they can show an erect penis in R-rated films. I think they can only show flat. I guess because that's too sexual by nature. Yeah, it's too oh, sexually charged. Yeah. I don't know. The the MPAA is stupid, dude. Um, don't say that. They're a, gonna rate us R. There's a good documentary about it. I forget what it's called. Just look up MPAA documentary. It's called the MPAA is stupid. <laughs> A documentary by Ryan McGee. But uh, you you just find out like the rating system in America is like kind of it's it's not real. It's driven. Yes, it's a corporation and it's a business, but it's ultimately driven by just kind of like every day, just kind of like older, like 40s and 50 year old people that just kind of like make up the rules as they go. And like there's no there's no it's kind of like a. Uh, YouTube in a sense where there's no clear uh, identification of what you can and cannot put. It's just kind of like movies eventually have felt out. You know how PG-13, I think it still does it today, or for the longest time they had the one fuck rule. Oh, and like, but also it's so weird because if you go back, it's shifted for sure. Because if you go back and watch like 80s PG movies, mm-hmm. they'll say like shit and stuff. Well, that's, and in, well that in, is in, because in the, PG movie. Well, Jaws was rated PG because PG was... I, in between PG thirteen and R, I don't think they had a. Did they have a rating above PG for the for a while? Didn't they have PG thirteen? PG thirteen was new because Jaws was PG, and I don't think PG thirteen was out in the seventies. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, let me look that up. When did when was PG thirteen introduced? Because TV has weird ratings too. Like there's like Y Y seven, right? Isn't there? There's like Y seven. Uh. PG-13, on August 10th, 1984, only three months after parents were outraged over the re- of the release of PG-rated Temple of Doom, Red Dawn, and drama star- uh, a drama starring Patrick Swayze, became the first film to be released with PG-13. Oh, so Red Dawn was the first PG-13, PG-13 film. Wow. Because of the outrage of Indiana Jones' Temple of Doom being PG. Really? Yeah. Oh, because he shows his penis in that movie. <laughs> When was I'm gonna see when was R rated rated movie? Remember like rated X. I remember when I was a kid, I thought like there were X rated movies that they'd show in theaters, and like like X was like. I remember X was such a mysterious thing as a kid because I remember like believing in this thing called Planet okay. X, where like I was like that's that's a planet beyond Pluto that has like my friend told me there were like seal aliens on it, mm-hmm. like seals. So I believed in that for a while. I was a stupid fucking kid. Okay, so PG thirteen was the newer rating because R was. R was a thing because it says the ratings used from 1972 to 1984 were G, PG, and R. And so you would have to have a massive kind of jump to get that R rating back in the So they could put the that makes so much sense now. Like I didn't know that. So that makes sense why so many PG movies had things in it that nowadays they'd never put in a PG movie. Because yeah. now it's nowadays it seems PG movies are primarily for a younger, like a kid audience. Yeah. You know, PG 13 is going to be anything a little more risque. And then like, R is for I remember adults. when uh, Harry Potter started getting that PG 13 rating. I dude, was like, that was, you know, I was thinking. Did it start that. with, yeah, uh, dude. Prisoner of Azkaban? Prisoner of Azkaban. Did you, were you big like into it. watching the Harry Potter movies when they came I out? I was, I was. I loved them. I saw them in theaters every time. I thought they were great movies. And I still think so. I think they're very fun. I love, uh, I think, I have I'm, I can't do it for a long time because I did it like last year. I just wa- I just went through them all. It was just such a nice experience because it's because there's nostalgia and also they're fine movies. They're 
They're fun. They're fun. They're um, they're uh, they're very like well made. They're very good at like building that universe. I I I like the yeah I like the universe building in them, and I uh, I like the directing. Um, and I know a lot of people say after you know the third film and on, but yeah, I like I really like specifically uh, Prisoner of Azkaban was good. But my favorite uh, Harry Potter film is Chamber of Secrets because it has the flying car, the Whomping Willow, the spiders, the basilisk. Oh, what's all the of that. what's the one that has like the double decker bus that can like squeeze like super thin? That always freaked me out. That's Prisoner cool of Azkaban. Way. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Actually, you know what? Why the is the long face man with the shrunken oh, head? Oh, I love talking that in the bus. As as of this podcast dropping. This should be the first podcast that's come, not at the time we're recording this, because we're recording this like two weeks early, mm -hmm. uh, but at the time of this dropping, I think the first Japan video should be out. Let's hope so. Oh, by the way, the first, see, I thought the third Harry Potter movie was PG-13. No, the first three are PG. The first one that's PG-13 is the Goblet of Fire for obvious reasons. He was my boy! That's a sad fucking scene. He was my son! You could play him really well. You're such a good actor. Thank you. You really are. Like you could, you could legit, you could leave me in the dust, Ryan. Leave you say <laughs> fuck this YouTube shit, and you could go be in movies. Nah, I'm you're not a fantastic me. actor. Thank you very much. Everyone it's I know nice. says that too. It's very kind. You're being very. All nice. of our friends say that behind your back. You're one of my friends. I'm glad that they're saying nice things behind my back. Behind your back, they only say nice things. They say Ryan is. He needs to let that hair down. He's a beautiful man, and I like my hair up though. If you like it up, then keep it up. That's your choice. If you like it, do what you like. Don't listen to us. Uh, if I were to wear it down, I want to get it cut because right now it's it's like it's pretty fucking long. It's like down to my nips. You're, start, you're starting to rock nips. the Jesus hair. I am. I got P P P. You can go take. How about a we pee. do the classic thing where I take a pee break and then when we come back, we have a fantastic ad read. Okay. Here I go to, to do the pee break. No pee song this time. No pee song in this episode. We're just gonna. Um, just go straight into uh, the we're ad gonna, read. Um, you won't even notice I was gone. Okay, guys. Ad read now. Summer comes with a number of awesome perks. Vacations, beach days, barbecues. But the one perk that outshines them all is summer-themed undies. Courtesy of, ha, you guessed it, Ryan, Me Undies. Me Undies is the only brand that lets you eat pineapple while wearing pineapple undies. Or watch the sky light up on the 30th of July knowing your undies are doing the same. We both own multiple pairs of Me Undies products. Their underwear, some socks, even some of their very comfortable pajama bottoms, and Matt's even wearing a pair right now. I'm I chose to not to wear underwear today out of uh, solidarity um, to the troops, but uh, I I will start wearing them again tomorrow out of respect. And they will be MeUndies. Yes. Um, so le let's talk about comfort, because you know I said that they were so comfortable. MeUndies scientists spent countless hours in their underwear labs testing out the softest fabrics in all the land. The result, micromodal fabric, which is a full three times softer than boring old cotton. Your move, cotton. Not only that, but you can match your bottom half with your better half in matching prints and colors. Look out for new summer themed prints dropping every Tuesday. MeUndies also makes the softest lounge pants and Onesius you've ever felt. Finally, you can now match your pup with the new Buddy Bands, available in the same prints and colors as their undies. This is important stuff, people. Also, Matt, MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. <gasps> for any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies product, you get 15% off and free shipping. <gasps> That's a big fat duh. Get 15% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you will ever put on. So to get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com, Ryan, slash SuperMega. Yeah, go buy those fucking under, under undies and stuff. Bye. That was a sick ad read <laughs> and a wonderful piss break. The, that they were. I got all the piss out of my cock and balls. Um, I got uh, a, a fresh drink. Another LaCroix? I did get another LaCroix. Because it's a good way to stay hydrated throughout the day while recording. Because it's a little bubbly. It's a little bubbly. Yeah. I like the bubbles on my tongue. Someone made a great comparison on Twitter I saw. They said drinking LaCroix, like drinking sparkling water, is like drinking TV static. And I, I think that's a really good way to wow, put it. Wow, that is perfect. You know? That is really good. Who it's said like, that? I just someone on Twitter. It's kind of like, uh, it's like the feeling when you're... I saw someone else call it angry water. Angry water. Uh, some heckin' angry water. 
It's good though. I do like I used to hate sparkling water and it kind of grew on me. Mainly because they had it at the Grump's office. Cause my mom used to drink uh LaCroix all the time. Um and as a kid I'd see them in the fridge. Those and I'm like, Charleston floozies. I know them Charleston floozies be like that. And I was like <laughs> I was like, man, I want I want a sodi pop. Ooh. Orange flavor, and I crack it open, and I'd be expecting some fucking like orange crush, like a nice orange soda. Next thing you know, I just got nothing but just some uh, some TV static in my mouth with a tiny essence of orange. It's nice. I like the lemon. The lemon's pretty good. The lemon yeah. and lime, like I like. Lemon and lime are great. I haven't had the orange one. Orange one's really good too. Is that what you're having right now? I have. I have a passion fruit. Passion. Do they even have orange here? Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, I'm trying to like, you know, obviously trying to do less sugar in the month of July, which is actually incredibly hard. I didn't realize it'd be so hard. It's almost like corporations put sugar in things because they know it's an addictive substance. And the more sugar they add, the more addictive their product will be. Dude, I, I feel like sugar addiction is like such a big problem that so many people have. But because it's 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 normalized. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you know, nic- Much like caffeine addiction is normal. Nicotine addiction is like, that's really bad. But like caffeine addiction and sugar addiction... I don't know if it's because so many people have it or because it, it's normalized for profit or whatever, but it's like... Because uh, it's not as harmless as like being addicted to drinking water. That would be wonderful. Yeah, dude. I um, wish that I could have a water addiction. I mean, I guess I do because if I don't drink it, I'll die. So I guess technically we're all addicted to water. But yeah. it's like... I, I feel like sugar addiction isn't even really talked about that much because uh, it, it's so bad for you. Does it increase your dopamine levels? Well, yeah. It's a drug. Mm-hmm. No, it's not a drug, but it sugar makes you happier it makes you feel effectively good. it changes uh even in the slightest way sugar will change your cognitive state and actually what's funny is like the more i'm trying not to drink soda and stuff this month and i'm not here to go on a huge health rant or anything it's just something i've observed is uh i kind of kind of getting the same feeling here and there as when i as when i quit drooling uh the same kind of like itch for i'm like oh man what i want a soda like mm-hmm. e- e- i'm not even thirsty but i want it i just I, like i, I think, want something sweet i want that sugar i don't want to say like i've grown out of sodas but it's like i don't crave them often i've definitely craved but candy and soda less when when i'm just like if i go to a five guys you need i'm a gonna get a burger. coca-cola you have or to. if someone's grilling out i'm like i gotta get a glass like i don't like drinking out of the can that much but if you pour that that sucker in a glass with some ice I think we can all agree the worst is the two liter bottles. That's the worst tasting Coke. Yeah. Just or just the, any of the bottles. The, bo- the plastic the bottles. The glass bottles are the best. The best. Followed Either, by, actually, sorry. like McDonald's, like fountain Coke, like from the from the fountain machine. That's good. That might in be the, the best. In the, in the cup. But I do like the, the glass bottles. And I also like a, uh, what you, uh, pour water, just like soak a glass. Don't like fill it up. Soak a glass, put it in the freezer, let it chill. What a nice and soggy glass. Then a nice frosted glass yeah and then you put uh the ice cubes in it just it's just so oh yeah ah. the glass gets cold they do that yeah. at some bars when you order like a drink like a beer and they'll mm-hmm. pour you a beer and like a nice because you're not a lot gonna... of bars uh not bars but i guess uh kind of I, I i can't remember where it is but they'll have like glasses in like a fridge to, like a mini fridge type thing yeah and take it out because you don't put like beer on ice which actually uh i'm going to bangkok very soon and uh i found out that in bang in thailand they they drink beer over ice so I'm excited to try that. Just like, I remember growing up, my friend's mom would drink like milk with ice. And I remember thinking that was the weirdest Straight thing. from her tits? Straight from her tits. She'd get a, she'd get a, a, gig, a big glass of ice uh, and she'd squeeze a titty <laughs> and uh, yeah. fill that, fill uh-huh. that, all that chunky curdled oh, yeah. milk. It's curdled milk. Curdled, yeah. Curdled. We wanted to do, Harrison had an idea for a sketch, which I wanted to do really bad, but turns out, uh, I think Tim and Eric actually already did literally the exact same thing. You told me about that, and then I told you it's the man milk. Yeah, thing. yeah. I was like, it's the it's in their Christmas special where it's like it's like male breast milk, and we we're like, how funny it would be if we got like a prosthetic tit for Ryan? Yeah, and it's like hurdled when it comes out, and it's like a commercial for this. And then you were but like, that, Tim milk. and Eric did that. Yeah, yeah. it's man milk. So it's already a thing. It's a good it's a good sketch though. Oh, I bet. Have I you seen their Christmas special? I have not seen their Christmas special. You should, you should watch. I don't their think Christmas so. Special. If I See, did, I didn't I like their movie that much. The billion dollar movie? Yeah. I thought it had its funny parts. Uh, you can tell it's definitely like a, a structure that caters more to like a 15 minute show mm-hmm. than, than, a, than a movie. It's still entertaining in bits, but I think like it, a lot of it falls flat because of the structure. That's of what a, they'll say about movie. the super mega movie. They say, this, why didn't they just stick to Let's Plays? Why did these guys make a super S- mega movie? Super mega movie coming soon. Was there a Smosh 2? 
Smosh of the movie too. I feel like they did a second Smosh movie. Did they? I didn't see it. I thought I saw some. We on. watched the first Smosh movie a long time ago. So, yeah, we did. We also watched both Shane Dawson movies, or mm. at least one of them. Shane Smosh Dawson, movie two. critically acclaimed director. Um, is, sm- is is there a Smosh movie? There was they, they well they made a movie like the Ghost oh, Ghost Mates. Ian uh, Ian October twenty sixteen. There won't be a Smosh the movie two. What? But there will be our new movie, Ghost Mates. Ghost Mates, yep. Coming to YouTube Red this December. Shameless plug again. Okay. So you're going to tell me there's not a Smosh movie 2 coming out? Anthony uh, and Ian are getting back together for that? No, and the premise of uh, a guy accidentally asphyxiating himself in his bedroom um, and then in, in the most goofy fashion played played for goofs and gaffs and and heartfelt laughs and then they go out and they do ghost hijinks or one of them does because they're, he's a is ghost. Is that Ghostmates? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it. He He's, I can't remember what happens but he, he in in a series of wacky tabacky events. So is he jerking off and it, it's fixating himself? He probably he was jerking dies. off. That's an incredibly embarrassing way to die. Yeah. You know. Have you seen World's Greatest Dad? I've seen the scene. Oh. I haven't seen the movie. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody because because it's like one of those. I have seen the scene though. It's very sad. It was yeah. incredibly sad. And also, I like that movie. It, I like it looks that movie. good. Although I will say, and I I've mentioned this before, I like that movie, but Robin Williams in that film has the worst case of movie driving I have seen in a long time. Oh, where he's like moving he's his hands, literally doing this. He's like jerking the steering wheel he's left jerking and, and right. Jerking, yeah, dude. It's um, it's. It's funny because I, I didn't realize that and the, the kid from Spy the Kids kid, plays it's the son. kid from Spy Kids. Yeah, it's Daryl. He plays Samara. like he plays the most, and it's weird because you see him in Spy Kids, and then you watch him in that movie, and he's the most vulgar. He's like jerking off, saying the f yeah. slur. It's like what the hell? That's not Juni Cortez. <laughs> yeah, it is. We gotta have a Spy Kids nights. In. I know we need to watch a. I think the first three are classics. Anything after like like three, four is, when they made four. I didn't. Why didn't Joel bother McHale seeing and that? Jessica Stop Alba. it. Mm-mm. No, I'm not even gonna see that. Was it? Was his name the Toy Maker? The Toy Master. Toy Master. Was it the Toy Master? Yeah. Or the Toy Maker? No, I don't know. Both of them said, both of them work, you know, like yeah. the Toy Master, Toy Maker. God, I loved that movie. <laughs> 3D? Spike It's 3D. <laughs> yeah. I fucking remember. I remember when it was coming out and my dad, it was a Friday and my dad was going to take me and my good friend to go see it in theaters in 3D. We were prepped for it all week. We were excited every day at school. We went, we drew a bunch of Spy Kids pictures all week. We went and put our glasses on. My friend, then he came over for a sleepover. It was so fun. And we like drew pictures like of, of us like riding like you the You saw bikes. it in 3D. Please tell me you saw it. Of course it. I saw it in 3D, course, dude. dude. Of course I saw Spy that Kids shit in 3D. Spy Kids is a classic. I would say it's just a trilogy. Spy Kids 4 is in Spy Kids Forget about me. Spy Kids 4. That's... You know, that's yeah. no, that's no good. Was Even three the one there. where he's a, where Judy is a, is a detective at the water park? <laughs> yeah, he's a PI. <laughs> a PI. <laughs> I love that opening. I was like, fuck, dude, this is This crazy. is serious. They, they've gotten serious with these movies. I know. Uh, two was fun because uh, they added, I remember uh, they added, what's her name? Something Osmond. Haley Joel Osmond? No, Haley. no, not Haley Joel Osmond. Uh, it's, it's his little sister. Is it, re- wait, is that his little sister? Yeah. I never knew they were related. Yeah, look at her face, dude. That's that's uh, Haley yeah. Osmond's little sister. That's Emily Osmond, I think. Yes, Emily Osmond. Yeah, because she was uh, she was on Hannah Montana. Yep, dude. What? Like, I don't think it's a bad one of those movies. Spy Kids, for four, I, which I haven't seen, but one, if we go one, back, I'm afraid to go back and watch. I think here's the thing: the I nostalgia can't... is what's doing it for us, right? Yeah, because while I, I I also saw well, here's the thing: I also saw Shark Boy and Lava Girl when I was a boy, when I was a little boy. Um, little and, tyke. Yeah, just a little boy, little tyke boy, little dyke boy, you know. <laughs> um, and in my head, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to watch that. Like, it, it, I don't think it's as fun, goofy. It's like it's. I feel like Shark Boy and Lava Girl got like way too goofy, like pink hair with the lava outfit, and then the which shark at the shark. time I was com- totally into. I, I love the whole Shark Boy thing because I all boys love sharks. I had a big crush on Lava Girl when that I movie thought came it was out. a Carmen. Uh, yeah, I, I I could see Robert Rodriguez seems like those movies like it's very specific uh, type of movie like Spy Kids 3D and Shark Boy and Lava Girl pretty similar movies I think it is very interesting with Robert Rodriguez because he directed uh, the actress who played Carmen since she was like a little girl in the first Spy Kids you know and then he goes on to direct I think it's the sequel of Machete where she's like this 
kind of overtly or just overly sexualized fee like that is it, that is a bit odd um nothing I'm, I'm not saying like oh you shouldn't sexual blah 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 it's a movie it's fake who cares you know um, wait did she play carmen in machete i don't know because i know because it's supposed it's to take place universe. in the same universe so it's got to be her right? let me let me let, let me look at the credit let me let's go to imdb to solve this problem let's let's go to imdb and let's see what her name is her real name is Alexa Vega, right? Yeah. I, I still remember this. Junie is played by Daryl Sabara. Uh, Antonio Banderas does the father. Like fucking Zorro is the dad in Spy Kids. And when I saw Spy Kids 3 uh, a couple years back, I was blown away at the, how big some of the names are they got in that movie. You know? The bad guy's fucking Sylvester Stallone. They got Steve Buscemi, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, they have uh, Antonio Banderas. They got them all, dude. Um, Mike Judge. Mike Judge. Yeah, <laughs> come on. One. The creator and like the creator of Beavis and Butthead and King, King of the, of the Hill. Hill. I can't even hear in those movies. You can hear the voice. Oh it's yeah, like, you can hear Hank's voice. Jimmy Garman. It's like, <laughs> you can legit straight up hear Hank Hill. I love how he's a bad guy too. Don 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 Donigan Donigan Giggles. Giggles. Donigan or Donovan? I think it. it I think it's Donovan. Donovan, Donovan Giggles. Giggles. Okay, Machete Kills. Oh, she plays. Um, Carmen? Killjoy. Oh, why not? She doesn't play Carmen? I know. You look just like my niece. Wait, Killjoy, in parentheses, as Alexa Vega. Oh, yeah, Mel Gibson was in that movie. What? Yeah. Mel Gibson was? Yeah. Charlie Sheen was in it. You Robert De Niro Esteban. was in it. Wa oh, my God. Dude, Ro Walton Ro Goggins was Robert in it? Robert Rodriguez is like, like, he pulls a lot of big names for his movies. Because, okay, listen who's in Machete Kills, Okay. Um, you got Danny Trejo, uh, Alexa Vega, uh, Mel Gibson, Jessica Alba, Amber Heard, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, Sofia Vergara, who's the modern family, modern family. Uh, Charlie Sheen, Lady Gaga, Antonio Banderas, Walt Walton Goggins, who is... Uh, I know Walton Goggins. Okay, good. Cuba Gooding Jr., Vanessa Hudgens. Uh, I thought they had a... Was that in the first one with Robert De Niro? Can we not... Uh, was the first one with Robert De Niro? Forget he cast George Lopez as the as the antagonist in Sharkboy <laughs> and Lava Girl. I want to see. Oh yeah, Robert. Never mind. It was the first one that Robert De Niro was in. The most recent thing I've watched to Sharkboy and Lava Girl was when I watched Doug Walker's review of Sharkboy and Lava Girl. I, wa <laughs> I watched. I watched. I watched him yell and scream about a children's movie, and I thought that was pretty good. I did. Well, enjoy he's the that. nostalgia critic. He has to get nostalgic about that. Actually, but I mean, when that movie came out, he still would have been a grown man. He can't get nostalgic about that. That's one. the name of the show, though. That's true. Yeah, I like to think he just went by himself to go see it, though, with his little three D glasses on, his thing of popcorn. Can you and I, for Christmas this year, sit down with Jackson and Harrison and whoever else wants to wants to sit down? We should we should all watch Jack Frost. Oh, for of, Christmas, of course, with uh, Michael Keaton. And he plays the harmonica. Yep. And his yep. dad. Yep. yep. Like, oh, okay. Well, okay. I remember it. I remember that movie uh, scared me when I was a it's kid. It's freaky, though. dude. It's fucking like, sad. And I remember it freaked me out because his dad dies, and it made me think of my dad dying. It freaked me out because of the snowman was alive, and it, and I thought the snowman looked freaky. It is a pretty freak. I mean, it's it's fucking Buster, not Buster Keaton. <laughs> Michael Michael Keaton as a snowman. Buster I forgot Keaton. that was Michael Keaton. Yeah. It's Keaton. The Jones. Batman. Keaton Jones as a snowman. The Birdman. The Vulture, which is funny. I love that. He played Batman, and then he uh, played an iteration of that in Birdman. That's why I thought Birdman and was so good. And then in Spider-Man Homecoming, he plays the Vulture. Really? Yeah. Why is, um, what do you think Keaton Jones is up to? Usual. Slamming some good tang, drinking some, some of that tang. good juice. Drinking some tang. <laughs> Slamming tang and drinking tang, boys. <laughs> No, Pootie Tang. He's, dr he, he, he's drinking He's slurping tang. that Pootie Tang. He's slurping it. Which one's he slurping? Which one's he slamming, you know? Could be doing both. Pootie Tang. Oh, man, I could go for some Pootie Tang right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm fucking, that's like one of the best words in the English language. Pootie Tang? Yeah. Well, um... You think it's a good place to end the podcast? Talking about Keaton Jones and some Pootie Tang? Yeah, you know what? Let's just end it here. Th uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, Matt and I just love hearing ourselves talk day in and day uh, out. It's, so good. It's why we're YouTubers and do what we it's do. So good. Um, thank you all for supporting us. Uh, thank you to those who support our Patreon. Um, and Go check it out if you want, by the way. We yeah. got some behind the scenes stuff from uh, recent videos and uh, more on the way. More content coming soon. And uh, y'all have a good one. Yeah. 
uh, keep slaying that pooty tang. Yeah. Is it booty tang or pooty tang? Oh, who cares? See you later, jive turkeys.